artificial intelligence and chat GPT started off as a tool to make your job easier. Chat GPT is a disruptor and a game changer for business communication. Now it's turning into a tool that might take your job away from you. Google parent Alphabet this morning, the company announced it's cutting 12,000 jobs. When chat GPT first launched, people loved the idea of using artificial intelligence AI to make your job and work easier. And companies loved the idea of using AI because then you could use AI to reduce costs aka have less employees. BuzzFeed was one of the first examples of this. BuzzFeed is a big media company on the internet doing hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue a year. And once ChatGPT was announced, well, BuzzFeed said that they want to use AI to start writing some of their content. And then right around the same time, BuzzFeed announced that they're going to lay off more than 10% of their company. And then their stock rallied because investors hoped that AI will let their company reduce costs and increase profits. But BuzzFeed isn't alone. Over the last 12 months, we've seen this growing trend where companies want to use artificial intelligence to reduce some of their costs. Like Google first announced that they want to start utilizing more artificial intelligence in their work and then they announced layoffs. Facebook did the same thing. Facebook announced layoffs and then they said that they wanted to focus on efficiency with the help of AI and even TikTok is doing it. But now this is where things get interesting because Microsoft wants to take this one step further. Microsoft is one of the biggest investors in artificial intelligence and they're investing heavily into a new AI feature that would write emails for salespeople so companies can reduce their sales staff. So we're seeing more and more investment into artificial intelligence to reduce costs for companies, which means reducing the need for employees, which will allow some companies to run even more efficiently. Now the question is, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it depends who you ask. There's four different parts to this. So here we have a company, inside of a company, you have the workers. The workers don't want to see more AI because if you have more AI and artificial intelligence, that could mean that some of these workers will lose their jobs. But then you also have the executives, the CEO at a company. These are people who are looking to increase efficiency in the company because they want to see the company grow and stay competitive. They want to see this company take over the world. That's why the CEO is working there because they want to see the company be the best that it can be. And they want to see artificial intelligence increase efficiency. So for them, it would be a good thing. And then you have the shareholders of the company. These are the people that own this company and invest in the company. This can be public shareholders, people like you and me who invest in the stock. These can be institutional shareholders. They want to see higher profits. Well, how do you have higher profits? You can have higher revenues or lower costs. So for shareholders, this could be a good thing as well, because now if you can reduce some of the workers, you can reduce some of the cost, assuming that you're going to make the same money and the artificial intelligence is going to be able to produce a product that is at par or even better than what workers are producing. So for shareholders, it's good. And then you have the artificial intelligence companies here, the companies like Microsoft that they're investing in. These are companies that are now working to take workers, hire them to invest in more artificial intelligence ideas. That way you can fire these workers and have more people coming here. Now, of course, there's a couple things you have to understand. Not every worker here is going to be able to come and work here. And anytime you see a shift in the economy, it takes time for the economy to adapt and new skills to be absorbed into the economy. Are there downfalls with using AI besides the fact that some people might lose their jobs? Well, of course, AI isn't fully intelligent yet. It doesn't have the same capacity to learn the way that humans can yet. AI doesn't have the ability to use common sense the way that humans can yet. AI doesn't have the ability to understand emotion yet. So yes, artificial intelligence is not perfect, but just like how the internet shook up our economy, it looks like artificial intelligence will be the next big wave to our economy. Let me dive a little bit deeper here onto the shareholder side that we really understand different people's intentions about why they're pushing for artificial intelligence. When you invest in a company, you're investing because you believe in the company and you want to see your stock price go up. A stock price will go up when you have more buyers coming in and buying the stock because they believe in the future value of the company. Maybe this is because the company's working to increase profits. They're working to reduce their costs. They're working to increase efficiency. They're working to come up with better products. Essentially, this company is going to make more money in the future. So investors want to come in and buy. And this is what pushes stock prices up. Let me give you an example so you know what I mean. We covered this example in Market Briefs, which is my free financial newsletter, which is why if you haven't joined Market Briefs, make sure you do that. It's a super easy way for you to stay up to date on what's happening in the markets, in the housing market, in crypto, in our global economy, and our own economy. It's a fun, witty, and easy to read email. You can read it in less than five minutes every morning and it's completely
completely free. So if you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, I'll put the link to how you can join for free down in the description below. But if you look at the Meta company, which is the parent company of Facebook, in their most recent earnings statement in the early part of February, they said that they are going to do $40 billion worth of stock buybacks. So they're going to use their cash, they're going to go into debt, and they're going to buy back their own stock. And then in addition to that, they also announced, well, that they might be doing more layoffs. They had already announced thousands of layoffs, and they kind of hinted that they might be doing more layoffs in the future. And then on top of that, they also talked about how they want to use artificial intelligence to increase efficiency at the company, essentially using AI to replace some of the work that employees are doing. That way now you can pay a computer, which is much cheaper than paying a high salary engineer. If Meta, the company, can save the cost of a $150,000 employee and and just pay a computer a fraction of that cost to do the same work that a $150,000 employee is doing, well, that's going to allow the company to make bigger profits because they have lower costs and maybe even produce a better product. Maybe not a better product yet, but the goal would be to create a better product for a lower price. This is why investors love the idea of companies using artificial intelligence because it's a way for companies to reduce costs while hopefully increasing productivity. Now, the increase in productivity and increase in efficiency will really take time to measure, but that's what investors are hoping for and betting on. So now you understand why shareholders are pushing for more artificial intelligence because it's a way to increase your stock prices and your investment values, and this is why it pays to be financially educated. But now let me talk about executives, CEOs. Why are they pushing for more artificial intelligence? Well, this has to do with a couple things. For one, how CEOs are paid, and second, they have a fiduciary duty. Like at most jobs, you have a KPI. Your KPI is your key performance indicator and this is a metric showing how good of a job you're doing. Maybe it's increasing the amount of dollars that you sell, maybe it's increasing the number of subscriptions that you have, maybe it's increasing the number of time that people spend on a website. It's a figure that you can measure how good a job you're doing. Well, for CEOs, their KPI and their fiduciary duty is not to make sure that their customers are always happy. It's not to make sure that the workers are always happy. It is to increase the value of their shares. It's to increase the price of their stock. Now, in order to increase the price of their stock, you have to make sure that your customers are happy. You want to have good, happy employees that way they continue to put out a good product, but the number one goal is to increase the stock price and then everything else is secondary. Plus, I should also mention the fact that the compensation for many CEOs isn't just a flat salary, it's a salary plus equity, meaning salary plus stock. So when stock prices rise, the CEOs make more money, so CEOs do want to see more efficiency in the company and they want to see higher profits because that could help increase the stock price, which means the CEOs would make more money, which is why CEOs are also pushing for more artificial intelligence. Now, of course, there is a downfall here because artificial intelligence doesn't have the same way of thinking that humans do yet. So there is a cost to doing that. And there will be some companies that will push too hard into artificial intelligence and it will bite them for doing that. Other companies will wait too long to use artificial intelligence and it will bite them for doing that. So it's kind of like the Goldilocks scenario where you're going to see some companies not do enough, some companies do too much, and then some companies who know how to use it just the right way, which also utilizes their workers the right way to grow the company, to grow the stock price, and to continue benefiting the whole economy. As an employee, and I'm going to speak in just generalizations right now, stock prices don't matter. What's going on here doesn't matter. What's going on here doesn't matter. Efficiency doesn't matter. Actually, for an employee, inefficiency is better. Because if a company is inefficient, they're fat, that means they have a whole bunch of extra employees. That means more people have jobs. More people are getting paid to do nothing. You could be sitting around watching TikTok videos and still getting paid. That's an inefficient company because you're not producing any value for the company and you're still getting paid. For employees, the number one goal is stability. And generally speaking, if you have more inefficiencies in a company, it's generally good news for an employee because that means you can keep getting paid even if you're doing something that the company might not need. Now, if a company starts to go more lean and they start to be more efficient, now they might start cutting divisions. They might start cutting people. They might start giving more tasks to people because they're letting people go. That's not so good news for employees. Now, of course, there's outliers to this. You have some that are the exceptional workers that want to see the increase in efficiency, that want to see the increased profits. Maybe Maybe now you have some employees that are also tied to share prices. They also have some equity in the company. They have some profit share. They have some revenue share. But if we speak just on a general level, an employee wants inefficiency because that means they can keep getting paid even if they're not working. But even beyond that, what most employees are looking for is stability. Now you can start to see the shift in power dynamics because over here, what you want is efficiency. 
Over here, what you want is inefficiency. And then this brings in artificial intelligence, which is working to increase efficiency without the same need for workers. Because artificial intelligence is working to increase efficiency by processing data, by doing analysis, by writing things for you, creating content with the click of a button using this artificial intelligence brain instead of using employees' brains. So the whole idea is this can replace some people here to increase efficiency and to reduce costs. But like I was saying towards the beginning part of this video, in order to make this happen, you would need more workers to go into here to increase, improve, and optimize the actual technologies in the artificial intelligence. That would require more workers here. However, what we've seen throughout time, anytime you see any sort of technological shift, it takes time for the shift to shift and absorb into the economy where workers have to learn new skills, it has to be absorbed into the economy. It doesn't happen overnight. And generally, when you see a new technology emerge, it does still reduce some of the workload. Because generally, the amount of workers that a new technology displaces does not equal the amount of new workers that this new technology requires. So what does this mean for you? Well, for one, and the most accessible thing is the importance of financial education, understanding how our economic system works. That way you can use your money as a tool. That way you can benefit from the way the economics system works, that we're not just a pawn in the system, but then also understanding the shifts in technology. The internet changed technology in the last couple of decades. Now it looks like over the next couple of decades, artificial intelligence is going to shift the internet even more. And so being on the cusp of this, of being more educated and being more aware, instead of being the person that's just blindsided by the change. People are spending money, they're going to Chipotle, they're going to Amazon, they're going to Lululemon and they're spending money. These corporations make more money, which means they have more money to open more stores. They have more money to hire more employees. They have more money to invest in more research, which helps to grow the economy. But if people don't have the ability to spend because they have to spend more money on their rent, 